Now, if you saw a photo like this, you might say, whoa, check out those sweet crepuscular rays shining up out of the clouds. And I'd say, yeah, those are pretty sweet, but you know what? They're also totally fake. And I added them 100% here in Photoshop. Wanna learn how? Today is the day. Hey everybody and welcome to Pro Photo Tips. My name is Josh Cripps and you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Joshua Cripps Photography. Let me start with a little disclaimer about ethics. Whether or not you choose to modify your photos in this way is totally up to you. I tend to not do this for my landscape photos, but if I'm shooting a portrait or something where I don't mind taking a little more creative liberties, then I have no issues at all adjusting the scene in this way and what you do is totally up to you it's your art but think about that and think of how you want to present your art and the integrity of what you're trying to get across now with all that ethical crap aside let's get into how you actually do this so here's a before image and here are is the after image with those sweet light beams coming out of the clouds now let me jump into exactly how you do this so here we go we've got a basic image here and, and this technique will work for a lot of kinds of images but the best one is when you have sort of speckled clouds like this with lots of bright and dark spots that's going to give you the best overall look to the beams now a lot of times you get really good results when you're looking right at the sun uh, because that gives you those highlight areas and you're more likely to see rays in that kind of situation anyway in fact if you look closely you can see a couple of little tiny ones uh, that actually exist in real life in this photo now let me show you how to add the fake ones so the process we're going to follow we're basically going to isolate all of the brightest areas of the photo i'm going to duplicate them and stretch them out in a way that makes them look like light beams so to start what you want to do is create a new layer a completely blank layer by hitting Control alt shift n as in ninjas or command option shift n if you're on a mac still as in ninjas and that just creates a blank layer and then go down here and add a layer mask to that now there's a lot of ways to isolate highlights here in photoshop and this is just one of them but it's a really quick one so i'm going to show you you go up to image, apply image, and just use all the default settings and click OK. What that does is it creates a grayscale copy of the image as a layer mask. Very cool. So now you can see we're starting to isolate those highlight and shadow areas. But we want to make it a little bit more obvious and a little more demarcated. So the way you can do that is um, if you hold Alter Option and, and click on that layer mask thumbnail, that brings up what the layer mask looks like. Then if you control or command M, as in Mansi, then it brings up curves dialog and you can adjust the actual tones of that layer mask. And so like I said, I wanted to isolate the highlights. So I'm gonna grab the black point and I'm just gonna drag the black point way up like this. And I'm gonna drag my white point down as well to make my highlights really, really highly selected and white here in that layer mask. Yeah, something like that. It's really not an exact science. You just want to isolate those highlights. And if I do that alter option, click on the thumbnail again, you can see that my layer mask now roughly corresponds to the brightest areas of the image, which is exactly what I want. Okay, now that I've got this really highly defined uh, mask, I'm going to turn it into a selection by holding control or command and clicking on the layer mask thumbnail. And you see it brings up the marching ants. And with the marching ants up, go ahead and click back on your background layer and hit Control or Command J. And what that does is it turns your selection into a completely new layer. And you can see if I isolate that layer, it's just got the brightest parts of my photo as this new layer, which is exactly what I want. At this point, you can go ahead and delete that masked layer. We're just going to be working with the highlight layer from now on. So here comes the fun part where you start to blur it out and make it look a little bit more like light beams. What you want to do is go up here to filter, blur, radial blur. Now radial blur gives you an option to sort of go ludicrous speed and stretch out points from a, uh, or stretches out your image from a common center point. And what you do is make sure that your blur method is set to zoom 
and, and I like to put the amount up to 100 and, and then click where the light source roughly is in the photo. I wish you could click directly on the image, but it doesn't work that way. So you just kind of kind of guesstimate. So in this photo, the sun is about uh, halfway between the top and the bottom, and it's maybe a third of the way in from the right hand side. So I'm going to select a point on uh, in this box that roughly equals that about halfway up and a third of the way in from the right hand side and go ahead and click OK. Now, as you can see, that started to make a little bit of our blur, but I want to really stretch those lines out and really exaggerate them. So I'm going to blur this a couple more times just by hitting Control or Command F and that will tell Photoshop to run that blur action again. Um, that's probably good. And now to make the beams even stronger, I'm going to simply duplicate this layer a bunch of times. So I'm going to hit Control or Command J. There we go. Now we've got a fierce set of beams and we did a pretty good job guessing right where the sun was at. So now we've got great amount of beams radiating from our light source, which is exactly perfect. Now, you can see it did some kind of weird stuff. It took these highlights here and it blurred them back over the rock and it did the same thing over here. So what we need to do now is group these all together. So hold shift and click on the bottom layer and that will select them all. Hit Control or Command G and that'll pop them into a group. Now we're going to add a layer mask and what we're going to do is just mask out the areas we don't want to see this effect. So if you hold Alt or Option when you click on a layer mask, it pre-fills it with black. Perfect. So now all our beams are gone. All that's remaining to do is to paint them back in where we want them. So I'm going to hit B for brush tool and make sure I've got white selected with a relatively low opacity. And that gives me the ability to really fine tune where my beams are coming in and do it with some nice subtlety. So what I've found tends to work the best is to figure out where your highlights are. You can see I got my bright, bright, bright clouds here along here. I've got some more bright clouds here and up here and over here. And starting at those highlights, paint away from your light source. So I'm just going to, I've got this low opacity soft brush and I'm just starting with my highlights and painting in a straight line away from my light source like this. There we go. Now in some areas, you're going to see that you're going to get uh, overlap in a way that you don't want or you don't like. For example, this light beam should not be shining over the rock, right? It should be going behind it. So once you've kind of painted in the beams in the way that you think looks good, then you got to come back in with a, with a black brush with a high opacity and paint back out. In fact, I'm going to zoom in to do that with a little bit more targetedness and just paint out the areas where those beams shouldn't be. And if you get a little sloppy with this part, it's okay because uh, things in nature aren't precise. And so nobody's going to be able to sort of predict or, or tell where the light beam should be or shouldn't be appearing. So you just want to make sure that it's not shining backwards. Like I just painted out this area because this is the highlight area that's producing the beam. It shouldn't be shining back toward the sun. In fact, we can make that one maybe pop out a little bit more just by painting from the highlight again away from the sun. And you want to make sure that it's not going backwards over dark stuff. Perfect. So I'm going to just kind of make sure that all this stuff is getting taken care of so that it doesn't look weird. In this area, maybe I put in too much beamage, so I'll paint back that out a little bit more with subtlety. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And that's really all there is to it. So now we've added our beams, we've masked them into the places that we want to see them. Let's go ahead and check out our result. So there's the before image, no beams, and the after image, sweet dude. Check out all those nice beams shining up from our highlights. There's another area that needs to be cleaned up right through there. You want to make it so that the, the beams have some layering, right? They shouldn't be on top of everything. They should be realistically coming uh, from the highlight areas and not out above these clouds and above the shadow areas. So there we go. 
So now we've got sweet beams shooting out from all our highlights and making our image look pretty as a postcard. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Uh, if you did, please share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. We have all kinds of great Photoshop tips and techniques. You can join the newsletter as well for in-depth Photoshop and Lightroom tutorials. You can also check out this post-processing video. Until next time, have fun and happy shooting.